But let's get really practical here because when we have a relationship between things, you know, in a company, I alluded to that a little bit before, we tend to call each person, each role within the company, we tend to give that a name so we know what to expect from each position, right? So we say the CEO, that's a name, that's a role, right? And we have the CTO, the technical officer, whatever, and we have employees with different titles as well. And so we put these titles onto these people because then we know what relationship they have to other people in the business, right? And the same thing we do here, we have seven different courts, seven different modes. And when I say that we have the tonic here, which is C in the key of C major, that just means tonic means CEO. It means that's where we start and that's where we end, right? Doesn't mean it means home, basically. This is home. That's its role. That's its role along with the other courts. And then I'm going to mention two other courts that are basic functions that are basic roles within, and the other courts are really substitutes for those three basic courts. So in the key of C, in the C major scale, the first step is tonic, we call it. If we go four steps up, we find another major chord within the scale, which is the F major. We call that a subdominant chord, just to give it a name. Right? It, it could be called uh, Tony, for that matter. It doesn't matter, really. It's just a name, it's just a sound that we give it, like CEO or whatever. It needs a, a, a sound a set that we say with our mouth so we know what we're talking about, right? That's a subdominant. And then if we go five steps up in the scale from C and form a chord from that, we get the G major chord, which is basically, if we combine it with the sound of the scale, we get Ionian, we get Lydian, which is then this sound, right? And then we get Mixolydian, which is this sound when you combine it with the C major scale, right? But when we talk about functions, when we talk about relating together and not just a single mode by itself, we talk about this chord being the tonic and this chord being the subdominant and this chord being the dominant, right? I hope that makes sense. This is only confusing because we're attacking the same simple thing from different perspectives. So just imagine if I were to have a political discussion with you and I constantly shifted between the right and the left wing of, of, of the polit political uh, perspective, right? So I was talking about one thing. I was just shifting constantly. So, you know, I don't think that. And then the next, you would be so confused. What is going on? What do you mean, right? And the same thing goes here. I'm just constantly shifting perspective. It just, it just depends on where you are uh, and what... Uh, you know, <laughs> how things look from that perspective. So we have the C, the, f the first step, and then the fourth, and then the fifth. And those are all major chords, right? So in the key of C, we have three major chords because those are all the major modes, chords within that scale. The others are, we have three minor chords as well. The E minor, the D minor, uh, the, the B minor flat five, right? Which is not one of the minors, and A minor, right? So we have three majors within any major scale, and we have three minors, and then we have the B minor flat five, or a minor flat five. A little weird chord there in the end. And so if we go to the, to the, to the A minor realm and say now A minor is king, then, okay, then A minor. We're still in key of C major, but now A minor is king, so we call it A minor. So I just changed my lily pad, so I just walked to the other part of the square, and now everything looks different, right? And I go four steps up from that chord. I hit the D minor, which is also a minor chord. And that's the subdominant of A minor. Tonic, A minor, suddenly. Home, four steps up from A minor is the subdominant of A minor. That's its relationship to the A minor, right? And then dominant, if I go five steps up, I go to E minor, Phrygian. If you combine it with the scale, you get that Phrygian sound. And that's the dominant of A minor. So in both the major key, we have three major chords, tonic, subdominant, and dominant. And in the minor realm, we have minor, tonic, minor subdominant, and minor dominant. And so this is magic. This is just a, just a cool coincidence. I have no idea how this was created, how, who sat down and you know, said, OK, we need these intervals in between uh, the notes, and then we can create chords, and then we get two different keys, relationships between these seven chords. One will have three majors, one will have three minor chords, and then that's genius, right? <laughs> and then we have this leftover B, you know, flat five, uh, seventh. Uh, but 
but that's just amazing. And so we just have to accept that that's a pretty cool system. Um, but there's one little drawback here, and that is that if you listen to this chord progression, now we are in C major. So I, I focus on C major being our home, our tonic, and I go... That's just the three chords you're hearing there. Subdominant, dominant, and then C. And, you know, these three sounds are basically what whole music is made up of. Then in the major key, we can use the minor chords as substitutes for these three because they sound a little bit like them. But these are the basic sounds. And in that dominant sound there, that comes just before home, just before the tonic, it really leads up to the, if you listen to it... that G and it seems to kind of push us in that direction of the tonic so that's what comes just before home and we call that a cadence those last chords that come just before we return to home and and the reason why it sounds one of the reasons why it sounds so like it wants to go to the tonic that like the dominant chord the fifth step wants to go back to home is that the second chord the third of that chord the third of g which is the dominant to c is a b and that note is just a semitone below the root of the home so when you play the g that's the third of g and when you play C, ah, so you get that little melody within the chord. And we really like that. That really sounds like la da da, la da, right? That's a cool cadence. Of so magically, that works really well. And so we use it over and over and over again. That's one of the elements that we really like so much that we use it just, you know, uh, in every single song almost. And if you look at them, go to the minor realm here. We have the A minor, our tonic, and then the subdominant, still the same scale. And then we have our dominant, the E minor. If you look at that, it's not as strong. And see if you can hear it. It's not. It doesn't really. Eh, it, this is much more. Right? It's more. Because we have that little movement there, but in, if we analyze it and say, okay, let's look at the E minor, which was the dominant of the A. I hope you're with me now. Otherwise, stop the video, go a li little bit back, and see if you can uh, just meditate over this. Uh, if you look at the second note of the E minor, which is the dominant here, it will be uh, the G. But that's one whole tone below the root of the tonic of the A. So we don't have that that we had in the major. We don't have this sound. We have a much more weak. It doesn't sound as good as. Right? It doesn't give us that, that nice th feeling there. So let's change it, people said, <laughs> at some point in music history. Right? So they said, okay, when we're in minor, let's just, eh, just, just change the system a little bit to fit, you know, because it's not a complete system. Every system has its flaws. So let's just, you know, make up for that little flaw. And so we create a a major chord. We change the, the E minor to E major. So we get that. Listen to this. Ah, that was much better. So instead of playing, we play... And now we have the same powerful connection between the dominant chord, the fifth step of the tonic, so we can return home in style, right? So now we have the tonic, the subdominant, and the major dominant. But that also means if I take that note there, this uh, G, and I push it up to G sharp, just one fret, then the whole scale changes. I can't do that without changing the scale because the, the chords and the scale are one and the same thing. So in that instance, when I play the dominant of a minor key, then the scale changes from being a natural minor. 
That's Ooh. natural minor, which is the exact same thing as the C major scale. Now I just start it on the A, so it sounds minorish. In in when I play when I change the G to a G sharp, it sounds like this. It sounds much more. So I get that very strong feeling in the scale as well. And then I go back. So if I had a chord progression uh, in C that went... I could just play the C major scale the whole time. Because this, all the chords are derived from that C major scale. But if I'm playing a... If I play a, a chord progression in A minor, and then I have that, that I have that dominant major come through, then I have to I have to go from natural minor to harmonic minor in an instant. practical uh, application of that little uh, thing there but so that's keys it's basically the re as soon as we say keys we say it's a relationship between the chords uh, of the scale but then now we have assigned the role of king this is the last point here we have assigned the role of king to these two chords to the C major now we just we stay within the realm of C major and to A minor and then magically the chords that followed were all major chords from the first to the fourth to the fifth, all our main sounds. And in A minor, it was all minor chords. Then we changed the, f the chord from the fifth to get that sound there. Okay. But couldn't we just say the second step of the C major scale is king now? How about that? How about saying, okay, D minor is king. And then we could go four steps out from that. What would you find there? We find the G, G major. And then five steps up, we find an A minor. Okay, so now we have D as the tonic. Let's just say it, let's just go with this. We have D minor as the tonic, then we have G as the subdominant, which is a major now, so we have minor and major. And then A minor would be the dominant, which is now a, a, a minor. So let's just play these three chords and see if that sounds like a key. Now, oh, sorry, let me just do that again, because that was wrong, we said, D minor, and then G major, and then A minor, and then right back to D minor. See, it's a cool chord progression. I like it, but, but... When I return back to the D minor here again, let me just... It doesn't sound like home to me. It isn't that, ah, oh, now we're back home again. It's like it's unfinished, but if I were to, because this actually sounds like a blend between whatever, let me see if I can, I can, I can end on an A minor. If you try this out and say, okay, let's try with the G, the fifth step being the, and then we have C as the subdominant, and then we have D minor as the dominant. Let's try that for a key. Then it's going to sound like C major. Like. Yeah. <laughs> That's home, right? You hear that? So within the scale, within the C major scale, it has its own logic to the human ear. So we really like assigning role to, of tonic to the C, that first step, or the sixth step, the A minor, 
So it has a, a logic to it that, that's really, you know, you could, of course, explain it by saying, ah, and the intervals and so on, like we can so many other things. But the point is that you can explain your, you can explain it all day, but it still is a fantastic piece of construction here that has its own logic built into it. So these two keys, these two main functions of the first chord here, the C and the A minor, they work so well. Uh, as being king like you know it's like having in company and you have different people within it and, and this guy or she or he or whatever will be you know you want those people as leading the company because they're best at that they're just the best people to choose for that job right or if you're in the military you have different roles you you won't make the general uh, a foot soldier suddenly and then the foot soldier the general because those you know, it doesn't add up. It doesn't give you the best of results. And it's just like this here, that the C major, that step there, that has a special kind of logic to it that we want to exploit. And that's why we have the C major and the A minor in, in that same scale as the, as the two choices of our home and the rest of the chords around them as players up against that, that basic chord. And that's keys. And I've been talking a lot about chords here, but what we're really talking about is sounds. And when you hear these chords being played together without any melody on top of them, what you really hear is the scale all the time because you hear that relationship between the chords. And that relationship is the scale, is the fundamental code of the key you're in.